In 2009, James Howells mined 7,500 bitcoins, but his girlfriend made him stop due to the noise. He eventually threw the hard drive away, costing him over $400 million today. Additionally, Laszlo Hanyaks bought two pizzas for $10 in 2010, which at the time was worth about $35 in Bitcoin. Today, those pizzas cost him half a billion dollars. Bitcoin Pizza Day is celebrated on May 22nd, marking the day Laszlo Hanyaks bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. Despite Bitcoin's recent growth, the concept of cryptocurrency dates back further than most realize. Bitcoin's origins and the mystery behind its creator remain fascinating, even as the cryptocurrency faces skepticism and a bad reputation due to frauds like BitConnect and OneCoin, as well as its use in illegal activities. Bitcoin is often seen as unregulated and associated with illicit activity, but it's gradually being recognized as more than just a speculative asset. As traditional currencies face inflation and devaluation, people are becoming more skeptical of the economic system. The need for new financial thinking is growing, as highlighted by Friedrich Hayek, Nobel laureate in economics, who in 1984 stated that he didn't believe good money would ever exist again. While Bitcoin isn't perfect, it achieves the goal of bypassing government control by creating a decentralized system. In traditional banking, a third party, like a bank, verifies and processes transactions. Bitcoin removes this by having a decentralized network where multiple copies of transaction records are distributed across the globe and every participant maintains a record, preventing fraud or tampering. I end the Bitcoin system. Instead of relying on banks, transactions are verified by a decentralized network of computers. If a transaction record is fraudulent, it's rejected because it doesn't match the others. No third parties are needed and transactions are direct, meaning they can't be blocked. Miners solve complex equations to keep the network running and create Bitcoin in blocks, which include recent transactions. Bitcoin is mined in blocks, similar to pages in a ledger and miners are rewarded with Bitcoin. There is a limit of 21 million Bitcoins to prevent devaluation. Bitcoin's value is based on what people are willing to pay, and if confidence is lost, the price could drop to zero. The true value of Bitcoin lies in the trust and utility of its decentralized network. Blockchain, the technology behind Bitcoin, is seen as an efficient upgrade to traditional databases, but may not be as disruptive as some believed. BY making blockchain public and decentralized and adding cryptocurrency. Bitcoin creates a potentially disruptive system, affecting finance, economics, and politics. Bitcoin is open source, with the code being regularly updated through Bitcoin Improvement Proposals, BPs. To ensure changes are legitimate, there must be 95% consensus among miners. The first block of Bitcoin, mined in 2009, contained a message hinting at Bitcoin's purpose, to respond to a broken financial system Point nine days after Bitcoin's first block, the first transaction took place between Bitcoin's creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, and Hal Finney, who received 10 Bitcoin. Satoshi later announced the creation of a new economic system in 2009. Bitcoin's story actually begins earlier, in 1983, when cryptographer David Chom experimented with electronic cash. As part of the cypherpunks movement, he aimed to protect privacy and created the Blind Signature Protocol, a foundational element for modern blockchain technology. David Chom created a concept for using eCash to make payments, allowing proof of identity without revealing personal details, such as in cases where someone needs to verify their age. In 1989, Chom founded DigiCash, with Nick Sabo joining the company. In 1993, DigiCash launched an eCash system, allowing secure, anonymous online transactions. Despite its technical perfection, the U.S. government saw eCash as a potential threat due to its challenge to traditional financial systems. David Chom's colleagues faced secrecy orders from the U.S. government, making it a federal crime to reveal their research. The National Security Agency, NSA, discouraged cryptography conferences, leading Chom to risk imprisonment to set cryptography free. At its peak, eCash caught the attention of Bill Gates, who offered $100 million to integrate it into Windows 95. 
Chom declined the offer as he was skeptical of others' intentions due to his paranoia and stubbornness. David Chom believed that better offers would come and wanted eCash to be perfect. He saw the development of digital cash as crucial for determining whether we live under a dictatorship or a real democracy. However, infighting led to him losing control of DigiCash, and the company eventually went bankrupt in 1998 after banks showed little interest in adopting the product. This marked the end of the first wave of digital currency. Despite the early struggles, progressive thinkers still saw potential in electronic crypto money. The idea wasn't bad, just ahead of its time, and lacked strong leadership. In 1999, economist Milton Friedman stated that electronic cash was necessary for the internet and could help limit government power. In the mid-1990s, the idea of cryptographic money gained momentum, with the NSA even publishing a paper on anonymous electronic cash. Despite proposing a centralized bank, the movement continued with new ideas like B-Money, designed by Wei Dai in 1998, which aimed to create online economies free from regulation. However, B-Money remained theoretical. Although Jim Bell's assassination politics proposal, which suggested using an encrypted currency for political assassination bounties, gained some notoriety. It ultimately led to Bell serving time in prison. In contrast, Nick Sabo's 1998 concept of Bigold, which proposed digital currency as a valuable commodity mined through cryptographic equations, stood out. The gold aimed to replicate the security and trust characteristics of gold without relying on central authorities, making it a notable precursor to Bitcoin. If David Chom's eCash was an early ancestor to Bitcoin, then Nick Sabo's Bigold was the crucial missing link. Despite Bigold being a foundational idea, it was never widely adopted due to privacy concerns and technical flaws. After a decade of silence in the cryptographic money space, in 2008, Bitcoin's domain was anonymously registered, and in 2008, Nakamoto released a white paper titled A Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System, Outlining Bitcoin. This paper ignited a chain reaction that revolutionized finance. Today, cities like Miami are exploring using Bitcoin for salaries, payments, and taxes. Bitcoin's breakthrough came in overcoming the double spending problem, which had plagued past digital currencies. Unlike physical money, digital money is just data, which can be replicated, leading to the risk of spending the same coin multiple times. Traditional systems like eCash relied on banks as trusted third parties to manage transactions, but Nakamoto's vision for Bitcoin was to eliminate trust entirely. By using a decentralized system to record ownership and transactions, Bitcoin solved this problem, and now major companies like PayPal, Tesla, and General Motors are embracing it. The birth and implementation of blockchain technology came with Bitcoin's solution to the double spending problem. In 2009, Bitcoin became functional, and by July 2010, it started trading at a mere $0.0008 rising to $0.08 cents by the end of the month, though few people took notice. Bitcoin's first mention on Reddit in 2010 was downvoted, and its first reference on TV was in 2012, in the show Good Wife, when Bitcoin's price had reached $3.41. By 2013, when Bitcoin was worth $100, it still had little attention, with even a talk about Bitcoin in an empty room. But despite this, there were a few early believers. Chamath Palapatiya, at the time when Bitcoin was priced at $135, expressed his strong belief in Bitcoin's potential, especially in developing markets. He pointed out that Bitcoin would thrive in countries with political or financial instability, such as Brazil, India, Venezuela, and Argentina. According to Chamath, the importance of Bitcoin lies in the ability to provide unfettered access to capital, regardless of what happens in more stable markets like the United States, Japan, or the EU. He emphasized that the real growth and demand would come from countries experiencing devaluation and monetary challenges. The mystery surrounding Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, remains a key part of the cryptocurrency story. Despite successfully developing a functional digital currency, Satoshi chose to stay anonymous and sent his last verified email on April 26, 2011, disappearing from public view. 
He still holds a million Bitcoin, which could make him the richest person in the world if the price reaches $197,000. This secrecy has led to numerous speculations about Satoshi's identity and reasons for vanishing. These questions, along with concerns about Bitcoin, will be explored further in future episodes.